guys, so today's video is going to share with you guys about um, our bedroom planning and renovation tips. Yep, so welcome to our master bedroom. Alright, so coming to the first tip, it is to make a list of some of the must-have in your master bedroom. So for example, the first one will be the size of your bed. So whether you want to get a king size bed or queen size bed. So in fact, I feel that this is actually one of the most important thing that you should decide from the start because it will affect the amount of space that you need in your bedroom. And then next up will be your wardrobe, which is going to be um, one of your largest or second largest item in your bedroom. So some of you guys might want to have a walk-in wardrobe or like a L-shaped wardrobe is fine for you. So it, it really depends. Some of the other items that uh, could be on your list um, could be, for example, you really want to have a platform bed, um, a dressing table, or even like a TV or like a, a relaxing corner with an armchair. So it's very important for you to list out what are some of these uh, must-have or like requirements for your bedroom. And then from there, we can start doing the space planning. So on our list, uh, we have actually two main items, uh, which is our priority. Um, the first one is to have a king size bed. So that is um, very important to us. So this is actually first in our list. And the second item is to have um, a decent wardrobe space. Uh, we don't exactly need to have a walk-in wardrobe, but we do want to have sufficient um, space and storage to actually put all our clothes, um, our bags and belongings. And then coming to our second tip, so it's a question to actually ask yourself whether you'll be doing any hacking um, in your master bedroom. So this is the floor plan of our unit. So some of you guys might be open to the idea to hack one of um, the bedroom or do some partial hacking. So to extend the space of your master bedroom. Um, so this can be something that you have to consider right from the start of the renovation. So that you know what what is the amount of space that uh, you are working with so for us we are not planning to do any hacking so we are keeping to the original size of the master bedroom itself and working with what we have and this is the final configuration that we have decided with our id so we have we put our bed right here which is a king size bed um and then with a headboard and then this connects to like an l-shaped wardrobe um that takes up all the entire space here and this brings us to our third tip uh, is to maximize space with built-in carpentry so as compared to getting loose furniture like what we did in our living room uh, we prefer to do built-in carpentry here because it helps us to maximize the entire weave of our bedroom which is not very long to be honest yeah because if we build in carpentry right we can actually measure the length of um, the wall and really maximize it so as you can see right here um, our bedside table is directly connected um, to our wardrobe here so there is no awkward gap and then it's connected to our storage bed yep and it goes all the way to the other side so it really maxes out the weave that we have here and for the height itself uh, this is a full height wardrobe so we have storage all the way to the top so this also helps to max out the entire height of the bedroom itself and you can also build like uh, top cabinets on top of your bed here if you want to like uh, to have even more storage and there are also some ideas online that uh, people actually build their cabinets up to here their wardrobe and then they have a cut in here uh, for the uh, what do you call that the bedside table yeah for example like this so these are some of the different configuration that uh, you can do with uh, built-in carpentry so I mean, as compared to getting loose furniture, um, you might have awkward gaps in between each of them because they are not exactly like fit to each other. So by doing built-in carpentry is one of the tips that we have for you guys if you are looking to maximize your space. I'm sure you guys have spotted our little mini bedside table here. So this comes to our fourth tip is to cut down on spaces for um, less prioritized items. So as you can see, like uh, we don't really need a lot of space here. Um, all we used to put is yeah wherever you see here and at night we will just put our phone and then our spectacle in the spectacle box so you really don't need a lot of space here so i think it's about 25 cm or even lesser yeah so we actually just got our uh, id and our carpenter to just build in like a uh, little plank here which works well and then coming for to the other side we do also have a bedside table here um it's also a small one right here and then we do a cut in here um, so that we can actually push in our curtains 
And one of the items that you might think that eh, is missing from the must-have list is a dressing table. So what we did is that we have this cut out here at our wardrobe. So our wardrobe actually ends here. But we have this additional space to do this uh, standing dressing area. Yeah, so as you can see, we have a mirror right here. And then we put like uh, our hair dryer, our skincare, makeup, etc. All at this area. So like in the morning, we will just do our prep here. So this is good. Like, uh, I mean, it helps to really save the space because you don't have to like, you know, cater like a dressing table area for it. But obviously the con is that uh, you can't sit down here and do your makeup for hours or what. So, I mean, it still depends on your lifestyle. I mean, to us, this is a really good option. So next up is for you to plan how you want to store your items. So for example, if you have an L-shaped wardrobe like ours, then you can actually start planning how you want to do the configuration. Like, um, are all these going to be hanging spaces? Uh, do you need drawers or do you need like uh, cabinets, for example? Uh, for L-shaped wardrobe, um, there is something that you probably will have to decide on. is how you want to actually uh, make use of this corner area. So this is one of the way you can do it, uh, which is like ours, whereby we just put clothes that we don't really use, like our winter wear, all the way at the back, like because we don't really access it. And then over at this side, um, you actually don't get to access that particular area. So this is one of the ways you can go about it. Um, another way is that uh, you actually open up this area so that um, the whole corner area can be accessed by both sides. But by doing so, you will actually have to pay extra, like an additional charges for it. And we also have some storage area at the bed, uh, whereby I'll put my bags and stuff. So, I mean, not just clothes, you also have to plan where you want to put all these items. And another one right here for like the bed sheets. Yeah. Next up is to plan for the height of your bed. So this is to us very important as well because um, it really, really, really affects like how comfortable it is for you to get on and get out of the bed. So for us, uh, we actually do it at 65 cm. So this height is made up of both the, the storage bed itself, the frame, as well as our mattress. So our mattress is 20 cm. So we got our ID to do our bed frame at 45. So we will have a comfortable height for it. And our next tip is to go for both day and night curtains. So night curtain as in this blackout curtain. So obviously this is a must, like because it's a sleeping area. So uh, you need to have like, uh, for us, like we need the darkness la, to sleep. So I mean, there's a few kind of night curtains. Um, they are those of like full blackout or like some are semi. So ours is actually full blackout. So once we close the curtain, uh, it's going to be like pitch dark. And besides this, we also got ourselves uh, the day curtain. So these are like, as you can see, it's actually translucent. So there are a few different types of like, uh, what do you call it, patterns. So this one is a bit of like, um, they call it the raindrop. La, the particular uh, vendor that we go to, they call this the raindrop style. So we we'll suggest to go for both because it allows you to like be flexible with the amount of lights that comes into the bedroom. So for example, daytime, obviously we won't be closing the blackout curtain, uh, but we will actually close the day curtain so that um, the sun will not directly shine on our bed itself. Yeah, so um, at, at night, you know, for example, if you want to wake up by natural sunlight, then we will actually maybe close this to like halfway and then still let in some, still let some sunlight uh, to peep in in the morning. So for our curtains, right, uh, they are not smart curtains. So we can't go like, hey Google, or like tuck it and then it will move by itself. So um, I think it really depends on your lifestyle. So if you prefer, you know, to have like uh, the convenience, then obviously you can have that in for your curtains. And next up is the plan for your cooling system. So um, such as fan and aircon. So for us, we got like a standing Dyson fan here. So we didn't opt for like the ceiling fan because uh, personally, I don't like it in my bedroom because I wouldn't feel safe having a fan uh, swinging on top of me like, while I sleep. But it really depends. So some of you guys might just want to go for ceiling fan. Uh, for us, we got this standing Dyson fan. Uh, initially, we were quite afraid that it's too low or it's not strong enough 
Yeah, but um, to me, I feel that it's really quite strong and it's quite cold for me. <laughs> yeah, so it depends on you as well. If not, we have our aircon here as well. So uh, for aircon, we actually have it for both our master bedroom and our common bedroom. So you have to work with your ID and your aircon contractor to plan the trunking. So for ours, we had a separate video on aircon trunking. So basically, um, just a quick one, our aircon trunking comes from all the way from outside. And it runs across our master bathroom up to here and it goes to our common bedroom first so from this piping it goes to our common bedroom yeah and then from here it actually goes all the way to our master bedroom so which is where the aircon was located at the other side yep right here and next up is for you to decide on the number and the position of your power point. So we have one right here uh, for our Dyson fan. And we have an extra one, uh, but we haven't been using it. So yeah, it's just an additional spare one. And then this one is actually used to be a, what I call it, a TV point. And then we actually change it to a data point because uh, we won't be having a TV in our bedroom. And at both sides of our bedside table, we have two PowerPoint each. Uh, but actually, I don't think we actually need two. Um, in fact, we probably just need one to charge our phone. But um, actually, we don't even charge our phone while we sleep. So um, it really depends. Uh, this could be something that uh, we should have no plan ahead that uh, maybe we just get one each. And this is also the only one that actually we got our ID to change the case uh, to match our headboard. So the rest of the house PowerPoint, we just kept it to the original HDB one, which is the usual white one. Yep. Yeah. And we also added another PowerPoint here. So this is for us to use our hair dryer. Um, yeah, so the same situation, perhaps we, have, we just need to get one because there's only one use case here, which is our hair dryer. Yeah, so we should have considered and planned ahead. So next up is to plan the lighting um, of your bedroom. So we have two ceiling light here. So the one uh, further away is like a round light. Yeah, and then we have another down light right here at our wardrobe area. So these two light um, can be switched on and off from here. So we use all the way at the entrance. Yeah, so when we are at our bed area, right, there is actually no way for us to switch these two lights off. So this is something that we should have considered. Maybe want to get like a two-way switch or something. Yeah, but as of now, because we didn't have that, so I mean, it's okay, we will make do with it. So usually at night, but well, before we sleep, uh, we were not on the ceiling light. So in fact, we will just switch on this uh, LED light strip that can be controlled from the bed side. So yeah, we'll just switch this on and then at night before we go to bed, we'll just switch on from that. So I guess, I mean, we just have to improvise along the way. So one thing we feel that we could improve on uh, is that this light is actually good because it leads up the entire wardrobe area. But what is missing is actually a light here uh, for our standing dressing area. Yeah, so at night or like early in the morning, right, uh, honestly, this area is a bit dark because uh, the light here and the, the sitting light there does not really like lit up this area so perhaps we should have also got another down light here or i mean as of now since it's already done done right i mean we could have you know used this spare little um powerpoint to maybe add some lights here 